Here in Civil Engine, I've imported a roadway base model that I got from AccuCities for a highway in Glasgow. And the next thing I want to do for this model is apply lane lines as pavement markings on this because there were no pavement markings included in this base model. And the way I like to do this is to establish first a guideline so that I can offset lane lines a set width. Here I'll probably do 12 foot lanes. Um, and show you how I do that. So the first thing I like to do is create a guideline. If I have a hard point of reference, like an edge of pavement or face of curb, what I'll first do is draw a line along that guideline so that I'm not just guessing out here in the open if I'm trying to get something pretty specific. So using, I've got my path visualizer on and I'll use the curve path type. I'm going to just trace along this median edge, applying points every 20, 30 feet or so. So I establish that edge of the roadway. And I'm not too worried right now about if the pavement marking dips below the surface. There's a few things I can show in the future for that. But right now, all I'm trying to do is get a geometrically placed line that follows that edge that I can use to offset for lane lines after this. So we'll stop there. So now having drawn and selected this path, I can now offset that stripe 12 feet from the path. So I can just type 12 feet here, or I can slide that spin bar. But now you can see I've moved that solid white line 12 feet to the right of the median. And in some cases, it's dipped below the surface, which is okay. Um, we do have this surface snapping feature so that the asset along that path does snap up to the base model surface. But you'll see in certain cases with flyovers or ramps or bridges or things like that, that if those are part of the same base model, those may jump even higher. So I do kind of like using this just as a guideline to then go and place a pathway for that lane line over the top, tracing over that line that I know now is 12 feet out from that median. So I'm gonna use the dashed stripe medium white line and head back to the beginning here, and I may place points a little bit more frequently just to make sure that I'm getting everything to appear where I want it to. There we go. And along the way, I might have missed a little bit. I can go ahead and just grab that node and use these arrows to shift it over so that I do make sure that all those nodes or hitting that guideline uh, from a left-right perspective. So we can make a couple adjustments there. So now I've got my dashed white line along that guideline, and I can take that first line that I drew. I could either delete it or just turn it off. I'll just turn it off for now. So now you can see I've got the dashed white line there that I know is 12 feet out from the median. This may not appear perfect. You may see some instances where the pavement marking line maybe dips below the base model, but that's okay. There's a few other things we can do to adjust that. In this case, we could potentially select that pave or that path and apply another node and then take that node and use the blue arrow to pull it up a little bit. But ultimately, um, we do have the surface snapping feature. If you don't have any flyovers, that's a really good way to get all those stripes to appear on the base model surface. The other thing you could just do is change the vertical offset a little bit. So there is by default a little bit of a vertical offset that bumps those white lines a little bit higher uh, just to make sure they're over the surface. And the nice part about Civil Engine is this pavement marking line doesn't cast a shadow. So even if it is a bit too high, it's still not going to appear like it's casting a shadow onto that roadway surface. It will look like it's sitting right there on the, the asphalt pavement. Now, if I want to apply another lane line to the right, I can just use this path that I've already drawn and apply a new asset. So I can add an asset slot and take the same properties of this striping unit white and copy them all down here. So I'll choose the striping unit white asset and 
I'm going to push it to the right so we can see, let's push that 12 more feet to the right. So now we've got this offset to the right and this doesn't look the same because it's got different spacing and rotation and scale than the default set for this uh, dashed striped medium white line. So I'm gonna take the spacing and bump that up to 20 like the primary asset. And then I need to change the base rotation so that this is turned either zero or 180. And then unlink the scale so that we can make this six feet long and six inches wide. And now we've got the same path of striping just pushed to the right. Here we may see those, those units dip down because that vertical offset is zero. So we can always bump that up a little bit and make sure that that line is now there tied to this original pavement marking line. And if I make any adjustments to this pavement marking line, all those other stripes on that path will adjust accordingly.